Lake Galilee was also known in the Bible as Canareth, which referred to its harp shape. Lake Galilee is the greatest expanse of fresh water in the Middle East, 21 kilometres long and 13 kilometres wide. Its fresh water is fed by the upper reaches of the Jordan River from the Golan Heights. The surface of the lake is 200 metres below sea level. It's part of a deep trench known as the Rift Valley that runs parallel with the coastline of Palestine from Syria in the north all the way down to Africa in the south. Powerful winds often sweep in from the Mediterranean in the west through the horns of Hattin between Tiberias and Capernaum and south up the Jordan River towards Capernaum or sometimes from the desert in the east. Any of these three winds can stir up the water, creating large waves on this normally tranquil lake. The bare black basalt cliffs on the western side behind Tiberias tell us that volcanic activity thousands of years ago formed the basin of this lake. The basalt soil on the western side and the limestone on the eastern side of the lake created good soil for farmers' crops. However, the most important industry around the lake was fishing. Numerous towns encircled the lake and each had their own harbours and breakwaters to shelter their fleets of fishing boats during rough seas. On calm days, these boats would search for many types of fish. The fish were then sold fresh or preserved, being salted, smoked or pickled. The summer months around Lake Galilee are hot, dry and still. The land dries up and becomes brown and dusty. In biblical times, many people moved away from the lakeside to the high country for relief from the sweltering summer. They'd return in the winter months when storms and rain would cool the area and bring out the vegetation and attract a wide variety of bird life. During Jesus' ministry, the lake was divided up into four political areas. The first area, southwest of the lake, was dominated by the capital, Tiberias. Tiberias was modelled on a Greek city, pagan in its lifestyle and practices. It was also home to the Jewish ruler of the western side of the lake, Herod Antipas. The second area, northwest of the lake, was between Magdala and the Jordan River's entry into the lake. This area was also under the jurisdiction of Herod Antipas, it was strictly a Jewish area and the village of Capernaum is situated here. The third area was northeast of the lake. It was called Gaulonitis. It was under the jurisdiction of another Jewish leader, Herod Philip, the brother of Herod Antipas. There was an uneasy tension between the two brothers since Herod Antipas had taken Philip's wife and married her. The fourth area, southeast of the lake, was called the Decapolis, the region of the Ten Cities. This area was mainly a Gentile area. Jesus ministered in all of these areas except for the region around Tiberias. This was probably because it was Herod Antipas's capital and because of the pagan rituals practiced there. The most significant thing about Lake Galilee from a Christian perspective is that this is the region where Jesus chiefly ministered. It was here that he started teaching people about the Kingdom of God. It was here that he healed the sick and it was here that he first entered into debates and disputes with the Jewish religious leaders. Galilee is the theatre where the great acts of God take place in the life and ministry of Jesus. The tax collector and subsequent gospel writer Levi, also known as Matthew, called this region Galilee of the Gentiles, where the people who sat in darkness saw a great light. For here, more than any other place in Israel, the glory of God was revealed in the life, teaching and deeds of Jesus, the Son of God.